Well, the image freeze is that of a 20 years old, primary gravida, first baby, no history of uh, previous uh, <coughs> DNCs or any other uh, pathology. However, she has been referred to rule out any uh, fetal anomaly. Her very first scan, the fe femur length is 4.3, corresponds to 24 weeks gestational age. Abdominal circumference is 207.8 millimeter, corresponds to 35, 25 weeks, and now the biparietal diameter is 7.75 centimeter, which corresponds to 31 weeks. Now there is discrepancy between the biparietal diameter and the abdominal circum femur length. Uh, however, the weight of the fetus is 755 grams. Expected date is 23-4-2015. It's, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 26 weeks. Uh, uh, we will go by the femur length. We will not go by the biparietal diameter. Uh, now, the femur length uh, is uh, corresponding to the gestational age of 24 weeks. Uh, so 24 uh, weeks is the gestational age with discrepancy between the femur length and the biparietal diameter. What we see is uh, at the distal length, uh, most distal length and at, rather at the end of the vertebral column we see uh, uh, almost uh, hypopoic uh, mass with internal cystic areas. You see, this is a cystic area. This, these are few cystic areas with strong back wall. See, this is the strong back wall, posterior wall enhancement uh, seen in this, uh, in, this, in this particular case. So, two pathologies are seen. Number one, there is discrepancy between the bipedal diameter and all the other diameter uh, and the other measurements. So here is the, uh, let me show you, where is the pathology. This is, you, know, you see, this is the vertebral column. These are the vertebrae, vertebra, and where the vertebra end, we see uh, inhomogeneous mass with internal cystic area, no calcification, and uh, it's thick wall hanging down and with strong back wall, posterior wall acoustic enhancement is clearly seen. This is the mass. So, now the another uh, pathology is that uh, the kidney, this is the right kidney, showing you hydronephrosis, dilation of the, remember dilation of all the calluses. This is the longitudinal section of the kidney, by years approximately 3.9 centimeter by 2.07 centimeter and this is the this area is the dilated calluses uh, hydronephrosis within this kidney okay this is the longitudinal section of the kidney showing hydronephrosis and uh, this is the urinary bladder, this area. This is the urinary bladder, it's okay. Urinary bladder is okay. And, uh, well, this is the transfer section of the kidney. This is the kidney that I was showing you, and uh, this is the transfer section. There is no significant addition of the uh, proximal ureter seen.
Now this is the second kidney. Both kidneys are showing hydronephrosis. If you see, this is the left kidney. You can see dilation of the calluses. Right kidney showing dilation of the calluses. Now you see this is the left kidney. And this is the other kidney. In transfer section, this is the vertebra. And here you see the dilation of the calluses. Hydronephrosis is seen bilateral with uh, no significant uh, uh, over distended uh, urinary bladder. So this is bilateral minimal hydronephrosis with no dilation of the, uh, no significant dilation of the problem we are seeing. Another finding in this patient is the female XY, no sorry, double X fetus and uh, see that there are, this is the amniotic fluid. The amniotic fluid is uh, Within normal, not uh, she does not fit into the criteria of polyhydramnios or oligohydramnios. You can see the echoes within the floating echoes, low level floating echoes within this uh, amniotic fluid that is uh, yeah, you, this will be you see the floating echoes within the amniotic fluid that is adequate in amount keeping in view the age of the pregnancy. Now this is the eye of the fetus. This is the eye. These are the facial features. Let's concentrate on the facial features of this. <coughs> this is the nose. And you can see the nares, lips, no evidence of uh, this is the nose or something, maybe a fetus. And these two tiny cystic areas are nares, there is no evidence of cleft palate or cleft lip seen. No skeletal dysplasia is seen. This is the head of the fetus. Let me take the vibrator diameter. Sorry, the F yeah. BPD again and see it uh, here it's twenty eight weeks. So, anyways, there is some discrepancy between the abdominal, uh, sorry, between the other measurements and the uh, head of the fetus. Let's get another view, another one. The relatively better view, scanning plan. All right. There is no abnormality seen relating to the skull, the fetal bones, skull bones, and I would like to go by this measurement. This is a good view for vibrator diameter. Whatever comes in view will be the accuracy. 29 weeks. So there is discrepancy between the measurements of uh, the head and the abdomen and the femur. Femur and abdominal circumference are showing no anomaly. You can see
see that uh, the skull is normal. Amniotic fluid filled with echoes. The facial features once again, the eye. the mouth, the palate, now this is the mouth, palate, this is the mouth, this is the palate, and this is the mandible, lower mandible, eye, you can see a tiny slit like ecogenic particles, this is the lens, eye lens, This is the fetal hand. Clenched fist. Fingers are normal. Number in number. We are coming towards the cephalic end of the vertebral column, it's normal. Now, you see that the chest is normal. Fetal heartbeat. One forty seven one forty four to one 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 forty four to one forty five beats per minute with regular waveform. This is the liver. This is the liver and you can see hepatic veins with the uh, the portal ruin. In the river. No one normally seen relating to the chest. This is uh, the transfer section of the abdomen. This is the longitudinal. The transverse. And you can see the stomach bubble. It is normal. No intra abdominal pathology is seen. Except hydronephrosis, mild hydronephrosis, that of the both kidneys. And now, coming again to the main pathology in this uh, patient, not patient, rather mother. Now this is the umbilical cord, it's two artery, one vein. Mycology is seen relating to the like a card. Let me get a transfer view, a good one. Okay. I am a bit short of gel. This is the longitudinal section of the umbilical cord in front of you and this is the transfer section. Two arteries, one way. Okay. Now, this is a magnified view in fact, wishing to show you the uh, pathology in uh, 
magnified view relating to the quadrant tip of the vertebral column. Here it is. The both poles of the kidneys are normal, so no question of being relating to the kidney. And here we are once again, trying to get a better, better view, as better as possible, as good view as possible. Here we are. Okay now. This is the area of pathology. And in the homogeneous mass, these are called vertebrae. This is the vertebral column. Catholic and most and at the end. Vertebral column. Caudal end, sorry, caudal end of it. This is a mass hanging. What can be the sonographic differentials of this mass? Why is there a discrepancy between the fetal head and the abdominal circumference? Why there are why the amniotic fluid is full of echoes? This is the brain. And uh, what is the cause of uh, hydronephrosis, minimal hydronephrosis in both kidneys. The, this is the placenta anterior wall, grade 2 to 3, no evidence of abruptio placenta or any other It's an anterior or normal placenta, grade 2 to 3, rather 3, and here you can again see the echoes within the, these are all echoes, floating echoes within the amniotic fluid. <coughs> full of echoes, the amniotic fluid is full of echoes. So this is our case of the day. What I am trying to do is to get uh, another measurement. And the interocular distance is 
less than 10, it should be less than 10, and it is 9.1, so no issue with that. Okay, this is our case of the day. Thank you very much. This uh, patient will be that how will we, when there is discrepancy between the vibrator diameter and the other measurements, the, uh, the femur length and the uh, abdominal circumference, then how will we know that uh, what is the accurate uh, uh, gestational age and uh, what will be the EDD? So, we, in such cases, we will always go by femur length. This is the femur, measures 2.6, uh, sorry, measures 4.99, corresponds to 26 weeks gestational age. So, this is the gestational, a proper gestational age in this uh, patient, in this mother with this fetus. And uh, we will say that the gestational age is 26 and uh, uh, weeks plus minus 6 days as per female length and the uh, expected date of delivery is by 23 April 2015. So this is important to note that uh, whenever you get the discrepancy between the measurements, we always prefer the female length. So this is in fact uh, a gestational age of 26 weeks, uh, just with a gestational age of. Now, another thing to see is that with the I, I ask the patient to uh, sit down for a while and then to see that. Now you see, this is uh, in fact what I am showing you now is same as, but just observe that the, is the curve of the whatever column normal at its coordinate? This is the pathology, this is the mass, this is the mass, this one. And is this curve normal? And here you can see that the fetus, here you can see three things. One, the whatever you call caudal length, tip of the uh, whatever you call them, a mass or, and then X, double X fetus. Now the other thing is that with the, as the patient, I asked her to wait for a while to see the urinary bladder of the fetus, is it over distended or not. And uh, you know, when the female, uh, when the mother micturates, the fetus also micturates. So she did micturate, the bladder is not empty, that of the fetus, this is the urinary bladder, it's not empty. And we can still see uh, the hydronephrosis. This is not of any significance because it is because of uh, this uh, relatively overfilled urinary bladder, that of the uh, fetus. It's a, we will not declare it as an overdistended uh, urinary bladder. It is just an just a filled urinary bladder. Uh, showing us the uh, hydronephrosis. This black area within the kidney is suggestive of dilation of the calyces. <coughs> so, this is a physiological sort of uh, uh, hydronephrosis. As the, page, the fetus will micturate, uh, this will disappear because it's bilateral with no dilation of the proximal ureter. Now another thing is, now let's see that uh, the discrepancy that we are getting in this case regarding vibrator diameter that we 
take from outer to inner, that is 29 weeks, is the, are the other measurements also correlating with it? Or if the other measurements, that is the head circumference and the occipitofrontal diameter, do they correlate with the Now you see it's 29 weeks, so it correlates with vibrator diameter. Now let's see about what is the occipitofrontal diameter. Again, it's 29 weeks. So all the measurements are uh, relating to the head of the fetus. The vibrator diameter, the head circumference, the occipitofrontal diameters, they all correspond to the gestational age of 29 weeks. However, the femur length correlates to the gestational age of 26 weeks. Now, in this case, if we get, if we, uh, get the, uh, we try to get the, uh, <coughs> um, cephalic index, the, the head of the fetus is not large. It's uh, with a normal, you divide the, uh, bipedal diameter with occipitofrontal diameter and then multiply with 100 and the measurement will is not uh, uh, is between 74 to 84. So if 74 to 84 then it's normal. So this is uh, regarding the head of the fetus. The abdominal circumference of the fetus The skin appears thick in this region. Yes, it is thick. You see, this is the skin. The skin of the abdomen is thick. This is the skin. And this is the vertebral column. It's thick up to 7.1 millimeter <coughs> and it's thick only uh, at the region of the abdomen. However, we did not see any thickness of the skin, uh, scalp, uh, but we do have an impression of thick skin around the fetal abdomen. Here we are in the transfer section. Fetal movements are adequate. The presentation is uh, cephalic. See that the curve of the whatever you call it, is it with a norm? So this is a complete study of this patient. Thank you very much.